For 15 years now, Dress for Success Toronto has been part of a global movement to empower women to thrive in the workforce. And our G and Leah is live this morning. We're learning more about the important work that they are doing. Uh, G, this is such a great initiative here, so tell us more about what's happening. Good morning, Nick. Good morning, Jen. Yes, we are here at Dress for Success, uh, the Toronto location. Believe it or not, there are over 100 uh, there are over 143 uh, locations across uh, the world, actually, in various cities. And it really is about empowering women. The motto here is self-confidence is the best accessory. And take a look at this. As you know, I'm a shoe person. I found these gorgeous shoes here with the tags on. This is just an example of some of the things that uh, a person can come and get some clothes, get ready for a job interview or um, for any other important event. Joining me now is Kristen. Eastwood with Dress for Success Toronto. Good morning. Hi, welcome. You know, I walked in, it feels like a boutique it in is. here. Yeah, that's yeah. very intentional. We want to make sure that when women come in here to access our suiting program, that they feel like they've had a special experience. And so when they come in, they meet with a volunteer stylist and they spend an hour feeling pampered. They access to clothes, they have a pair of shoes, um, they'll have a coat um, and a purse that they can take for a job interview or for the first few days on the job. Yeah, and so, you know, you're working with various people who really just need that extra little, you know, help in preparing yeah. for a job interview or a job. So tell us a little yeah. bit more about some of the programs here. So we work with about 2,500 women a year. We support women across the GTHA. Um, a number of our clients are newcomers, so they just landed here. They may or may not have uh, English as a first language. They don't know people. And so we really provide that community, that base of support. Um, and so we have women who are newcomers. We work with a number of, uh, of women who are single moms. A lot of our clients are living on low income. And so this is a way for them to, um, to have access to clothing because we all know that clothes make you feel good. Mm -hmm. um, but it also gives women the, the tools that they need to be able to go into an interview well or to be able to succeed in the job market. Okay, let's walk through the space sure. here. Okay. Um, there's a month-long campaign that's taking place right now. Yes, so we are. We have a, a whole campaign to be able to encourage people to support Dress yes. for Success. Yes. Um, and so we are a nonprofit. We are a charity. Uh, we don't have core funding, so we support on the. We rely on the community to support us in terms of clothing donations and financial donations. So we are encouraging people to support us in our 15th anniversary uh, because we've been around supporting over 20,000 women, uh, which is uh, more than would fill Scotiabank Arena, uh, which gives people a really great visual. Um, and during the pandemic, what happened? is we couldn't run our student program mm -hmm. and so we started to create these really great employment programs because it's it's great to have um, clothing but a great jacket's not going to get you a job mm -hmm. and so we have uh, cohort programs we have networking programs we have one-on-one -on -one support and then we have these great events that bring women together um, the clothing is the one piece that's a commonality across all the uh, 143 dress for success affiliates but it looks and feels different in every every market so oh. this is the core program Program, and it's very visual as you can yes. see um, but it's a really great way to connect people in and then we can educate them about the other programs that okay. we offer too. Okay yeah. great thank you yeah. so much so just to give you some an idea of some of the outfits I mean you come in uh, you can work with a volunteer stylist you can pick yeah. out outfits for yourself what a great idea um, for more information you can go to dressforsuccesstoronto.org uh, financial donations are also welcome volunteers and of course clothing donations it's all driven by the community the volunteers volunteers, financial donations. There are even corporations that donate brand new clothes and accessories to Dress for Success for Toronto. Um, and it really does help many of the clients here. They even have volunteers that do fa um, styling for some of the clients. So I put together, I mean, like, look at these shoes. I love these shoes. So here's an example of something that I walked around and gathered. I think this suit is fabulous for this time of year and then the pants. And then you kind of put it with two different types of shoes. I chose one heel and one flat, depending on your preference. And then you go to a job interview like that, feeling like a million bucks. And that's what this is all about. I'm going to bring in a very special person now. This is Kual Kirk. Come on in, Kual. How are Hi, you? Hi, Jeet. Hi. Hello. How are you? And so, thank you for having me. Thank you for joining us. Kual is a client here at Dress for Success Toronto. So Kual, tell me a little bit more about your background and how you came to Dress for Success. Uh, so I'm a newcomer to Canada and I'm an internationally trained doctor. And I was deferred to Dress for Success by a newcomer agency. Uh -huh. And then it's been a long relationship with them. 
and, and also in Van Nuys Sea. So when you first came to Dress for Success for Toronto, you were preparing for a job interview. Yes. Yeah, so tell me a little bit about that. How did it go? So at that time, uh, I was preparing for a job interview, but I did not know how to have that perfect business look. And that was where Dress for Success stepped in. Yes. And they provided me with a lot of options. And I had a first visit to their boutique. And then, as they say, that a good jacket does not land you a job. So they are very wise people, and they knew the next steps for me. So they first guided me through the dressing, and then they had their one-on-one -on -one appointments, their sessions, like the Working Women Guru Group, the other career development events, like the workshops and webinars. Everything was going on at different times of the year, mm -hmm. and that was the support, yeah. And so for that first job interview when you first came here, you got the job, right? It was a contract yeah, position. Yeah, yeah, I did, I did. And it was quite in alignment with what Dress for Success does. It uh, was a job which worked with women empowerment. Mm -hmm. And for me, as a person who's been involved in equity, diversity, inclusion, so women empowerment is a very big thing for me. And that's why I'm here today speaking for on their behalf. Yeah, and we should mention, like, Wall is a medical doctor, uh, but unfortunately, the cert, um, your your diploma, your degree, isn't recognized here. For sure for not. And everybody knows that. Yeah. that there are huge roadblocks, right? Yes. We bring in internationally trained people, but we don't give them the same career opportunities yes. as they deserve. Yeah. So, yes, there have been roadblocks. Yes. Mm -hmm. But you're you're getting there. You've got you're working and and you're supporting your family. Um, I thank you so much for sharing your story with us. I pulled together one other outfit, so I wanted to know, Qual, what you thought. This is more of like <laughs> a, a classic navy with white and with flat shoes or high heels. What do you think? I think this is amazing, and I love the neutral looks yes. for any interview because you know they suit every color palette yes. and satisfy every person's taste. So I am absolutely in awe of what you have selected. Thank you so yeah. much. <laughs> I got a seal of approval. Thank yeah, you, Yeah, cool. for sure. And if you want more information, you want to volunteer or financial donation, or come and shop at the boutique, dressforsuccesstoronto.org. Good morning. We are live here at Dress for Success Toronto. It truly is like a boutique. Clients come in, they're able to pick out uh, an outfit. Look at this. This would make for a great uh, outfit if you're going for a job interview or attending a special event. And they have inclusive sizing as well. So I picked out this outfit here for, for uh, plus size women. And uh, we put it right here and then you have shoes to match, which is so fabulous. Um, they serve uh, and help out thousands of clients uh, here in Toronto, but there are uh, Dress for Success boutiques all across uh, the world in several different cities and countries. Joining me now is Karen Bangu. She's a board member with Dress for Success. Good morning. Good morning. Um, you know, it's amazing that this service is available because really it's amazing how an outfit can really boost somebody's confidence and get them ready for a job interview. Yeah. And that's that's pretty one of the reasons why this exists, right? Yes, yeah. It's about making sure that our clients are feeling good, but also they're armed with the right information. So so not only does Dress for Success um, outfit the women, style the women, help help them feel good, mm -hmm. but also give them the information that they need. So we do things like webinars and info sessions, how to interview, what does business casual mean, different things to help um, to help our clients navigate kind of changing jobs or getting in, back into the workforce. Yeah, and uh, these are um, important tools and resources available. What are you seeing when uh, the clients come through? What type of people are we seeing coming through? Uh, it can vary. It can vary from women who are um, in a different type of domestic family situations where they're, you know, trying to gain their independence and find their footing. There are newcomers to Canada who are um, like who we met before with Kowal who want to come in and um, get into a, a job search, get get find a career in Canada, and um, and we want to make sure that they feel good and that they're informed and that they they look good and they're ready to kind of 
get on that pathway to financial independence. It's clear with the boutique you do receive donations, but there's so much more that people can do as well, aside from when they're um, spring cleaning uh, their closets. What else can people do? Yeah, so I'd say there's three ways that you got, that people can get involved. Um, the first is always, we will always take donations and money. The, the money really goes towards helping um, helping this function the way that it does. Um, the second thing you can do is you can, if you work at a corporation, you can kind of gather your colleagues, your friends, fundraise, or you can actually do like collect suits um, and make sure, you know, the sizing is inclusive and we'll take donations. Um, and the third thing you can do is create a um, kind of like a DIY fundraising event. Um, I know myself, I get together with girlfriends and we do a clothing swap and anything that's leftover suits, purses, shoes, um, they, it gets donated here. So it's kind of, you know, no, not spending any money, but giving something, someone's trash is someone else's treasure, right? So it's like we swap clothes and then anything that's that's left we donated what a great idea I never thought of that gathering my girlfriends together bringing our stuff together yes. and then obviously donating and then for anybody who works for a corporation watching corporations get involved as well like there are brand new items that are donated yes yeah and there's different ways that corporations can get involved if there's organizations that have women's um, employee groups um, they can but they can make sure that uh, they can get together and do the same thing in a corporate and work environment. Okay, so for more information, dressforsuccesstoronto.org. Uh, it's an important initiative, and, you know, we're here at Dress for Success Toronto. It really is like a boutique here. I mean, some of these clothes that you can pick up as a client, how beautiful is this coat? And then pair it with these shoes. These shoes are brand new. And then also they have everything here, including undergarments. You know, a lot of retailers... Um, make donations. These are brand new undergarments and so really everything and anything is provided for a lot of these clients which is so important. Joining me now is Iona Frost with Dress for Success Toronto. Hi, Hi. Good, morning. good morning. So let's talk about this month-long campaign that's taking place right now here. Yeah absolutely. So I mean I love your enthusiasm for the clothes because of course when people think of Dress for Success uh, they do automatically think of the clothes and so we are celebrating our 15th anniversary this year and we're really hoping to uh, celebrate with as many people across the the GTHA as possible and uh, again when you think about us you might think about how can I support dress for success and clothing items do come to mind at first glance and so as you've seen today we do not have a shortage of clothes and we really appreciate all the donations but really where the greatest collective impact will happen is to become a uh, monthly donor and so in alignment with our 15th anniversary um, if you become a monthly donor at just $15 a month you can help uh, maintain the free access to the programs and services that we offer here at dress for success. And let's talk about some of those programs and resources. What is available here? Yeah, absolutely. So again, you're familiar with the suiting and the clothing piece, but we recognize that the, the suit or the um, the outfit is, is not going to get you the job. And so we really developed a comprehensive approach to our program and service delivery, um, not only in the areas that we address, but also in how we uh, offer our programming. So we um, offer in-person and virtual opportunities uh, for uh, women to connect. Um, so to give you some examples, Last year, over 500 women participated in our online skill development workshops, and this covered areas ranging from productivity and uh, uh, goal assessment um, to confidence and self-esteem, which is a big one. We also logged uh, about 300 hours of one-to-one -one discussions uh, with coaching uh, specialists, and this is our team of incredible volunteer uh, specialists who, um, you know, connect with our clients to talk about basically the barriers of the job search process and what they're experiencing. And, and I guess the most important thing here is letting people know, clients that come through, they're not alone. There is a community here. We're in it together. Absolutely. I would say that's the number one key piece. Um, Dresser Success is all about women supporting women. And we do a cre incredible large-scale events each year as well. So coming up in June, we're uh, in our sixth year for a conference called Mastering Your Job Search. And this is um, going to be um, June 22nd. And it's uh, um, available to all women across the GTHA. And then we have a new... Uh, uh, large-scale um, uh, networking event uh, specifically for youth and so in partnership with the Royal Bank of Canada in September we offer a, a youth employment summit and this is specifically for women who are between the ages of 18 to 29 knowing that they are facing such you know greater barriers to employment right now okay and so in order for a lot of these programs to take place um, it's it really is about the partnership but people can help out by making that monthly donation absolutely as I mentioned all of our programs are at no cost to our clients mm -hmm. 
so that donation is really key to helping maintain access to these programs and services and really what you're doing is directly helping women and their families along their journey to economic uh, success and, and independence okay so for more information you can go to dress for success toronto.org and again there's so many ways you can help out you can even volunteer I know I should be a volunteer stylist <laughs> we would right? welcome you at any point <laughs> absolutely I, I'm having a lot of fun pulling out <laughs> outfits for people like this one right here yeah. thank you so much thank Iona you. again dress for success toronto.org Good morning. We are live here at the Ontario Science Centre learning so much about the solar eclipse. As you know, it's coming on Monday. And so to learn more about this big day and what's going to happen, I'm joined by scientist Sean, as well as his helpers, Avery, Owen and Neam. Good morning. Good morning. How are you doing? Good. All right. So you've got your helpers. Yes. Walk us through what is happening on Monday. So on Monday, we are going to experience a total solar eclipse. Uh, near Niagara and south of Toronto. If you are in Toronto, we're going to get 99% of that total eclipse. And what a solar eclipse is, is we have the moon and the earth, and it's when the, sorry, the sun and the earth, and it's when we have the moon, they go right in between and they align in perfect alignment. And the sun will actually shine on the moon and cast a shadow on the earth, this, on Monday, it's going to happen right near Toronto, and south of Toronto, we'll get totality. So I have a question. Um, the moon orbits all the time, but we don't have a total solar eclipse all the time. So why is Monday different? Monday is different because the moon's actually on a five-degree incline. So when it's orbiting around the Earth, it'll sometimes go uh, in between them ab at, uh, above the Earth, so it'll cast a shadow above the Earth or below the Earth, so it'll cast a shadow below. Sometimes we do get solar eclipses. We get total solar eclipses about every 18 months. Okay. However, they might also occur on a portion of water instead of on land okay. on the Earth, so we don't see it as often. So this is a really cool, rare event. Okay, and I love this backdrop here. Mm -hmm. So walk us through a few of the different stages here. So when we're starting off the solar mm -hmm. eclipse, we're going to see the moon enter uh, and start to cover the sun on one side. And we're about 20% over here of right. coverage. This is known as a partial eclipse. Uh, it'll start to go more and more of coverage. And in Toronto, it'll start around 201 when we get that first contact and it'll last until about 440. Okay, and then scientist Sean, then we get closer to the total eclipse. Tell me what this is. This is called a diamond? Yes, so uh, what happens is as the moon is getting really, really close and we're about to enter totality, you'll start to see beads of light and that's because the moon isn't perfectly round. It has mountains and craters, those deep valleys. So light is penetrating through and creating these beads. Eventually when we get to the last one, that's yes. known as the diamond ring. Yeah. And then we finally get totality, which is here, where we get coverage and we get to see the atmosphere of the sun known as the corona. Okay, so I know that in Toronto, we're getting over 99% totality. Yeah. Um, you have to have proper eyewear, right? Yes. So kids, come on in over here. And there's a proper way to do this. Yes, so a lot of people have their solar glasses yes. or are purchasing solar glasses. Okay. If you're going to put these on, do not look at the sun and then put them on. What you want to do is you want to know where the sun is so you can look at where their shadow is being cast behind you look in that direction of the shadow put on your glasses first then look up at the sun and then look down at your shadow and then take them okay off. let's practice this Neem, you've got a pair there oh and you got a pair there can scientist Sean can you walk us through that again yes. so just so that everyone can do this here. here you go Avery so I'll give you a pair. Uh, let's pretend that they are the sun yes. so what we're going to do is we're going to look away put on your glasses Look towards the camera or our sun, and then look away again, and then take them off. Okay, and, and you definitely here. need the proper eyewear. It yeah. is so important. Um, and the Science Center has a bunch of fun activities taking place this weekend, Saturday and Sunday, ahead of the big day. So for all the information on that, you can go to OntarioScienceCenter.ca, right? You got it. All right, we're going to take a break here on CP24 Breakfast. Kids, let's see you do that one more time as we go to break. 
Monday is going to be exciting. A lot of people learning about a solar eclipse. And so we have scientist Sean here with some fun activities for the kids. Yeah, uh, this weekend we're doing some pre-eclipse activities mm -hmm. to prepare us for the solar eclipse. And one of them is our UV bracelets. So you can come over to the Science Center on Saturday or Sunday and we'll have some beads and some pipe cleaners and you can make your own uh, UV bracelet. And when you shine the UV light on it, you'll see that it begins to glow and change color. You can even make a UV person or even a keychain as well. Uh, the choice is yours. I love it. And it's really great because during the, tolar, the solar eclipse, we have UV light, and as the moon covers it, you'll get less and less. So you can wear your bracelet out in the eclipse and see how it changes over the time of the eclipse. Super cool. Yeah, it's really neat. And then you've got a really cool arts and craft demo here as well. Yeah, this is another one that you can make. Uh, if you, uh, Owen, if you could turn it around for a second, and you can see where you, you can make a circuit, and when you put the battery to touch the contact yeah. and turn it around. Okay, and Owen, then, if you could turn it around Owen, and show can the you camera. demonstrate this is Owen's version of a total solar eclipse. Yeah, so you have a moon and the sun and the moon's right in front. I love it. Can you show us the diamond ring, which we learned downstairs? Very cool. How cool is that, Owen? Really cool. And I like it how, <clears throat> I like how it like shines out from under the moon. Yes. Because it like, it reflects off the bottom of the moon and goes down onto the sun. Okay. I like it. Very cool. Amazing. And then it's other activities color. as well, right? Yeah. Sign to shine? Yes. So we have a couple of, you have an activity sheet that you could take because this is a great time to use observations like scientists. Yes. Scientists are going to be studying this total solar eclipse. Uh, to learn more about the sun, you could do your own observations and record your data of what you see, what you mm -hmm. hear during that time, what you feel. And that's a good record that you keep. Okay, so now, of course, a lot of people wondering. They want to they wanna see the total solar eclipse. Of course, here in Toronto, it's over 99%. Yes. But depending on where you are, it's only going to last seconds to minutes. Yeah, so if you're a far east in Kingston, for instance, it'll be just over three minutes. If you're towards the southwest of Toronto, let's say in Hamilton, it'll be a, a minute and 30. And we're looking at the time span between like uh, 3 18 in the afternoon to about 3 21. So, around that time is when you want to start to prepare to look at the solar eclipse, yeah. you'll get totality and then. Yeah, see it. and that's just really at the peak. I mean, the solar eclipse takes over uh, several hours, but you're yes. only getting partial coverage. Exactly. But if you're in Oakville, it's mere seconds. Yeah, it's like t uh, just over 20 seconds, like <laughs> between 20 and 25 <laughs> seconds. And it will be busy in those hot spots for sure. Absolutely. Kids, what, are we having a fun time, Niam? Are you learning a lot? Yes, very much. <laughs> very What's much been your so. favorite part so far? Um, I liked learning all about the stages yes. downstairs, yes. Yeah, that was really cool. I kind of forgot some, but then now I remember them. <laughs> all right, so Avery's got a head start on us. It's really important to have proper eyewear. Yes. Oh. So when you're looking, first of all, they don't have these at the Ontario Science Centre, and I believe most libraries are sold out, but you can still get glasses. You just have to make sure where you're getting them from. Yeah, just make sure you get it at a reputable source. Yes. Uh, the uh, Royal Astronomical Society of Canada has some great resources where you get them. You can get them online as well. Okay, and really quickly, how do we put these on, kids? How do we put this on properly? You look away from the sun first. You put it on. Look, and then you go away, and then you take it off. Yes. Okay. Perfect. And then one thing I learned, even if there's a little bit of a crease, that is, concerned, uh, that is considered damage and yep. not to use something like no, that. You don't want to use something like that, or if there's a pinhole or any scratch on the lens. Okay. Yes. Lots of good things that we're learning here at the Science Center. And again, lots of activities this weekend ahead of the total solar eclipse. For more information, OntarioScienceCenter.ca. So it's been so much fun here at the Ontario Science Centre. They are going to have lots of activities this weekend ahead of the solar eclipse on Monday. And then on Monday, um, they are open, but they're not doing a viewing party. So that's something that people should know at home. And again, they don't have the glasses. I know these things are really valuable. Kids, are you having fun this morning? Yeah. Yeah, so I know you're off school. You're going to be at the library, Neum, on yep. Monday? Yeah. Yep, Civic Center Library. Nice, yep. nice. And Owen and Avery, you guys are going to chill at home? Yeah, we're oh. just going to stay home. Very nice. Close. Okay. Scientist Sean joins us now. If you don't have the glasses, there are still safe ways of viewing the solar Yes, yeah. yeah. And uh, one of those ways is that you could look at the ground. 
uh, instead of directly at the sun. And if you want to look at the ground, you can use a colander or a slotted spoon. Now, if you were to shine a regular light through the colander, you'd probably see just circles on there. But we set up kind of what the sun looks like. If we look on the board here and you shine it through, you can see the crescent of the, of the solar eclipse. And you can actually watch and observe. And what's happening is that the light is going through each hole and it's getting focused on, in this case, the board or the ground when you're looking down so you can see that solar eclipse. So I want to stress again, this is what you would do on the ground. You're not doing this up in the air. No, right? exactly. Okay. And your back would be towards the sun when you're looking at that. Okay. Uh, through the colander. Another thing is you can make a pinhole camera. Yes. So you can take an old cereal box or any box and you're going to cut a hole on one side, a hole on the other side and put some tin foil. Then you're just going to use a little pin and prick a hole and what you do is you're going to look through here and you'll, with your back to the sun and the light up from the sun will shine through the pinhole, focus it on the back inside and you'll be able to see a solar eclipse through there safely. Um, and again, you're pointing this towards the ground? Yeah, uh, yes, uh, okay. toward, you could toward, point towards the uh, ground as long as the sunlight is going through the pinhole and your back should be to the sun when okay. you're looking at it. Okay, okay. Yeah. And then again, proper eyewear. Yes. What are the don'ts? <laughs> so the don'ts you don't want to use, is something you don't want to use are sunglasses. Sunglasses will not protect you from a solar eclipse. Uh, you want to use your solar eclipse goggles. Those are made for you for safe viewing for the solar eclipse. Another thing you don't want to use is, are negatives or um, uh, 3D glasses. Those are not acceptable at oh. all. And then again, once again, let's emphasize, how do we put these glasses on? Uh, yes, that's very important. So what you want to do is you want to know where the sun is. You can look on the ground and see where the shadow is being cast. Face your shadow. Put your glasses on, then look up at the sun, and then look back down at your kind of towards your shadow, and then take it off, and you're safe. Okay, kids, can we practice that? Let's try that. So look away from the sun, you put it on, then you look up, and then back down again to take it off. All right, are we excited? Yeah. Avery, are you excited? Yeah, did you learn a lot today? I think your favorite part was making the braces. What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> um, and you must be excited, scientist Sean, because you're a scientist. Yes, this is really great. So are, where are you going to be on Monday? I'm going to be heading towards the east, east of Toronto, maybe towards Burlington, Hamilton area to see the solar eclipse and hopefully uh, get a good view and enjoy it with the community. That's, that's what makes this event so unique and so rare. It doesn't happen very often. Mm -hmm. The next one that actually will happen in totality in Toronto is 2044, 120 years from now. So we're really lucky to be able to share this with community and with family and friends. Yeah, and yeah. it's a great way to come this weekend to the Science Center. The kids learn a lot. Yeah. Uh, lots of fun activities, right? Come yes. on over. You're going to have lots of different cool activities yes. that will, like we demonstrated here. Yeah, so some, some of those activities are, once again, we're going to be making the UV yeah. bracelets. And you can you wear this while you're looking at the total solar eclipse so you can see it change. We're also going to have, uh, yeah, you can see how it glows. Yes. We're also going to have a couple of videos uh, where we're creating a theater to uh, talk about solar eclipses, the effects with animals on solar eclipse, uh, how a solar eclipse works, yes. and how to view it safely. Okay, thank you everyone for joining me this morning. Thank you. And again, if you want more information, OntarioScienceCenter.ca. Right, this morning, GM Lee is getting some tips and inspiration from designer and artist Stephen Sabados once again. Uh, today, G's back in his studio, and it's all about gardens and those outdoor spaces for when the weather finally agrees with that, G. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning, Jen. Yes, it wouldn't have felt like it yesterday, but we are, it is spring. I know yesterday felt a little bit more like winter and it is time to think about the garden, your outdoor space. So joining me now is designer and artist, Steven Sabados. Good morning. Good morning, good morning, morning. I was so happy to see this because it's reminding me that it is spring. It actually <laughs> is, absolutely. We have a plethora of planters here. Yes. <laughs> and let's talk about that because there's so much to choose from. There really is, you know, in the market right now. And what I want to talk about is one of the biggest trends is our artisanal planters. I know it sounds kind of weird, but you know what? But the beauty I love about this, and we can really see it here, is that we're celebrating artisans. These have been handmade by humans. Not machines. Not machine made, <laughs> and not on some factory line, you yeah. know, which is great. So the, the beauty in this is that, number one, we're going to get the imperfections, we're going to get little subtle, difference, uh, subtle differences, um, and then your garden can sort of look 
I don't know, eclectic, and mm. with this much color, it's yes. just beautiful, beautiful. Yeah. So let's talk about some of the points yeah. in here. I just want to show you quickly. This one here, uh, this one I love, like little pinch pot here. So I love you can see the artist's thumbprints oh. that went into this. You know, these are all imperfect. Um, you know, and this is a great little uh, pot for herbs and, and whatnot. And again, the color mm -hmm. is so beautiful. And it's inconsistent as well. Like this one here, you can see the, the cracks, it's a bit worn. Um, the detail in this, come beautiful. on. If this were outside, like how beautiful. So this little collection here, I kind of gave a, a bit of a Mediterranean moment, if yeah. you will, you know? So if you were planting all of this outdoors, uh, using these pots, I should say, um, I would probably go a little less on the colorful florals. Uh, you know, maybe a lot of greenery mm -hmm. would be great. Or simple things like maybe just geraniums. Uh, you know, say in this pot here. This one is one of my favorites. This one here, hand painted in Morocco. How would you know? Uh, it says on the bottom. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> You're so smart. <laughs> I just flipped it over. Yeah. Hand painted in Morocco. Yes. But look at this amount of detail that this artisan went through on this. You right. know, just beautiful. And one of the things I wanted to tell you to look for is here, and you can see here, this was definitely on a potter's wheel because wow. this was the artist's fingers going in and pulling the pot up. Right. So you know this was handmade. And that's important. It's really about bringing art to your space. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So we have this side. And then on the other side, we have, this is my little neutral moment mm -hmm. over here. So here again, we're dealing with all these like beautiful neutrals, but uh, again, texture, texture, texture. Okay, so this is sort of more your luck. Now here I want to talk about, if we're uh, talking about resin, because resin is always great, yes. and, and, uh, and wicker. So this is a resin wicker, UV rated. Oh, and that's important, right? That's very important because uh, this will fade, you know, like a few weeks in the sunshine, and yes. all of a sudden it becomes this color, Got you it. know, which you don't want to have. So look out for that. Also things like this too, G as well. This I actually thought was real banana leaf. It's not, it's, it's resin. resin. It's resin, it's which amazing. is so, so clever. Yes. And again, all hand woven, mm -hmm. which is beautiful. And you know that for sure, because it, uh, um, you know, you can tell that an artist did that. Other pots like this, again, tons of texture we're looking for. Uh -huh. Um, and uh, the clay pot over here, this one, uh, I think is just so beautiful. It's done in a natural bisque state, so it's unglazed. Oh, so, nice. Yeah, so what's going to happen with this is that over time, it's going to start to get that gorgeous mossy green happening. Mm -hmm. You know, the water's going to sort of seep through, and it's going to uh, just change over time, which is beautiful. Now with these, I want to talk about, because you can really see at the opposite of this side, they're so neutral, this is where you can have your color moment. Got it. So this would be like huge explosions of color and florals and whatnot. So this, the, the pots are the star on this patio uh -huh. and the florals are the, are the star on this patio. And either way, it would look beautiful depending on your space. Absolutely, right? and depending on sort of your mood and what you're looking for. I'm more this side, yes. although I want to be this side. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm not that adventurous for, yes. for this much color on my containers, but I think that it's magnificent if this is your aesthetic. I love it. So many great tips, and I've learned something. Read under the pot. Then you'll <laughs> <laughs> always look for the label. Always the look for a label. You'll know where it's from. Okay, you don't want to miss our next segment. We're going to make planters, but they're going to be made out of tiles. A super inexpensive but gorgeous way to bring some color to your space. Good morning. I know it doesn't feel like spring out there right now, but by next week, you'll be ready to bring the planters outside. So joining me now is designer and artist, Stephen Sabados. We're gonna make our own planters. Super, super easy and super cute. I mean, it, this is for the DIYer, you know. Um, and again, I love finding things and then changing the purpose of them. Mm. So we're gonna create planters out of tiles, okay? So this box here was just uh, some tiles that I got. Go to like uh, uh, stores, like secondhand stores, uh, building centers that have sort of like, you know, odds and ends. Um, and I got these tiles super cheap. So the one we're gonna be creating, uh, this one here is a, a travertine tile. Uh -huh. I got these for like a buck 20. That's it, and how many pieces do you need for You them? only need five. Oh wow. Okay. So, so do the math on that, yeah. there's nothing there, you know? Um, so like I said, it's just a little bit of the DIYer. So right. we're gonna create a box, generally. So here I've just lined up the tiles. I've taped them on the back with some masking tape. Yes. And now we're gonna use, this is where you come in. Okay. You've never done this before. No, I've never. <laughs> So we put a little line here, and this is just, and squeeze, squeeze, squeeze oh. the trigger, squeeze on the bottom. Oh, on the bottom? On the bottom there, yeah. I thought I was. And oh. squeeze. Oh, got and it. this is a construction adhesive that glues tile. 
Oh. Okay, so this glues ceramic, it glues wood, yes. it glues uh, uh, metal, it glues everything. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna just squeeze that in there. Okay. And now essentially I would build the whole box. Oh, but I see. Just so Ken can see us in here. So there we go. Now I have, oh, you did a really good job. Okay. Now I have my glove here. Yes. So what I just do is I do a little bit of this, a little bit of that, a little bit of that, right? Okay. Build the box, let her dry. And you drilled holes in oh, the bottom here? Drilled holes in the bottom for drainage. Yeah. Makes sense. So we're gonna put this aside. Yes. Let that dry for a solid 24 hours. Okay. Okay, and then when you're done, you're gonna have a great box, so. Right? I love it, and I love that you can maybe match your decor or do something unique and yeah, different. Yeah, like imagine matching. So, and this one here, so again, I got these at a, a building center. Uh -huh. for nothing. For nothing. And this nothing. is actually tile. Yeah, this, these are ceramic yeah. tiles, I should okay. say, yeah. So now we're gonna plant. So I literally went around like dollar store. I, what I want to do, we're not gonna plant this whole thing with dirt. There's too much dirt. Yes. So I thought, what can we do to raise it up? Uh -huh. So I have styrofoam balls, an old metal cooking tray, which I sort of MacGyvered here to fit. And again, you put holes in the tray. I put holes drainage. in the tray for drainage. Okay. So we're only gonna plant half. Now you come in. Right. Dirt. Now here's the, the important thing, we're gonna use, because we're planting succulents, mm -hmm. we're using a cactus and succulent dirt mix. Not regular soil. Not regular soil. The reason being is that because whatever's in here, we don't have a lot of vermiculite. I mean, there's some vermiculite in here, um, you can see, but there's more like wood chips, wood shavings, and the soil's gonna dry out mm -hmm. really, really fast. And how much do I put in? So, you know what, maybe we can do this. Just dump the whole thing in? Hey, there we go, yeah. Got it. Uh, okay, so we're gonna dump that in. Yes. Look, it already smells like summer. It's beautiful, <laughs> okay. Now get our succulents. Yes. And we're going to now start planting. And I guess... Just a little hole in the middle there. Pop okay. them in. This little guy here, we're gonna okay. get him in. I could have put some more dirt in, but that's okay. That's okay. And this little guy here. Right. And then, how do you finish it off? So, the great thing is we can use stones like we have here. To match the tile. To match here. the tile. But what I like to do, uh -huh. you, you've got some here, is, here's the great trick. Go to, the, uh, to a pet store and get fish gravel. Because fish gravel comes in a gazillion colors. So what I want you to do, here, you know, I'm sorry, I'm just gonna grab some of these. Yes. We're gonna first pile in some stones. Okay. So we can see this. Then I want you to finish it off with the fish gravel, so put that on top. So that it and matches? It's, it's black Here. gravel. It's black gravel, so it's gonna look super chic and modern. Yeah, so what we wanna do is, because the, the black box here, so on the hero one that I did over there, yes. obviously I did a light stone, but, but look how great this that's looks. That's so great, and so then if you have a blue tile, you can get the blue. The blue fish gravel, and fish, fish gravel, like I said, comes in hundreds of colors, right. and it's super, super cheap. <gasps> Super cheap. Look at that. Um, and look how cute this and is. And what an like, inexpensive but gorgeous way to And have. when you're watering it, yes. just water, just mist it every now and again. Okay. You can water it a little bit. They do have to dry out. Love it. Um, but I love this whole sort of Arizona vibe we're having here. Love it. Such a great idea. So again, stephensabados.com. Check out all his amazing projects, but look how great this is.